Hey, I'm Lucy Smith. This is Replay and today I'm going to be going headfirst into Julia Jacqueline's Crushing. This is one of my favourite records of all time and if you have ever had a crush, you're crushing on someone, someone's crush on you and you felt crushed in the process, you are gonna love this record. The album opens with, I reckon, one of the best album openers of all time. This song is called Body. I fucking love this song. Like, I could speak for 40 minutes on this song alone. You know when you're at a function with someone and you have, they rub you the wrong way, something happens and you can't pull them up on it in the moment because you're in company. You leave the function, you get back to the car and you're in the car and there's just this tension while you're waiting for someone to just break the ice and talk. That is this song. It's just, you just feel this tension. So we never know if Julia Jacqueline's songs are autobiographical. She never specifically says, but basically in this one is the story of them being on a domestic flight. The person she's with goes and has a dart in the bathroom, gets caught, and then they have to basically turn back around, go home. She never gets the money back for that weekend. And it is just cutting. I love this bit. I said I'm gonna leave you I'm gonna leave you. I'm not a good woman when you're around. Oh, like it just, ah, oh, it kills me. It's just so raw and you can, and you can feel it. You can feel that moment where it's just like, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. I'm tired of your shit. Like call it an outburst, but not, I've had enough. There's a bit as well in it where she's just kind of like, you know, you're more kid than criminal. You know, you think you're so crafty. Like, you know, you think this is so funny that the police have like caught you doing this bad thing on the flight. And she says, you couldn't wait to call a friend. So he can't wait to get off there and have a laugh about it to his mates when he has literally ruined her entire weekend, probably embarrassed in front of all these patrons on the flight. Like, it's just insane. But I think where this song really comes to a head and why it's called Body and the way it kind of like thematically sinks throughout the record is this next verse. Well, I guess it's just my life And it's just my body Okay, I think the reason why that one is so poignant is because in 2019 at that time, I know that I don't think I'd ever heard many artists reference revenge porn in that way. Like it was just, you know, and, and gosh, the photos that could be out there of any of us, I think it was just this moment where a photo is taken consensually and with love and in the moment, but then afterwards you go, do you still have it? You know, could you use it to hurt me? And you kind of have to relinquish that control. And this line that she just repeats, repeats over and over again, I guess it's just my life, it's just my body. And I've actually heard her say that sometimes this line in particular can be a real moment of strength, but then at the same time it can be a real like, well, oh, guess it's just my life, it's just my body. That frustration and kind of when you're at wit's end and your body is this commodity or this thing that's there to be poked and prodded and commented on and, and is, yeah, just for, up for someone else's play or discretion. So it's just, it's such a powerful song. It takes its time, it's slow, it's brooding, it's foreboding. And I reckon it's just the most incredible start to this record. It's one of my favorite songs, period. So that's why I love that one. All right, this is where things pick up a little bit in the record. And again, we're kind of seeing that references to body again and to autonomy, but it's a little more upbeat. Such a good line coming up. I don't want to be touched all the time. I raise my body up to me mine. And when she was writing this one, she had to go to her bandmates and say, this feels a bit, is this cheesy? Because I think maybe with songwriters, there's this feeling of having to be nuanced and having to, you know, put things in a little bit of a, a comical way or, or a, a mysterious way. But she wrote this when she was on tour and she was like, I'm just being fucking real at this stage. I'm so tired. I don't even have the room to do nuance right now. So here it is. I'm tired of being touched all the time like I don't want to be touched all the time so I just think it's raw it's real and that only gets louder ah who can relate I had your back more than you had mine oh this is just oh.
Like just, you can love somebody without using your hands. And that goes for anyone. It goes for partners, it goes for friends, lovers, fans, gosh, anyone in that world. And it's just, or in your world, it's so blunt. And I love that, I really do. Oh, so good. This song's Pressure to Party. Again, we're building on the pace, we're building on the momentum. And I like what this song is about because it kind of touches on the fact that when you fall out of a relationship and you're single again, you're encouraged to get back out there. You know, there's that real pressure to get back out there, move on, go pash a bunch of people. But I love that she acknowledges here, it's like, as soon as you have a few drinks, I would run shoes off straight back to you. <laughs> Like, she's reading all of us for Phil. She's like, I know that you would go back to him or her or them. You'd go back. But it is that kind of outside pressure from your friends, from whoever you're out with, to be like, come on, get out there. Especially when you are the person who maybe broke up with the other because you should be fine, right? You're happy, right? You've gotten this person out of your life now. Go move on. But there's a lot of pressure around that. Okay, okay, this bit here about when you're, when you're single again and it's almost like you have an audience. It's like people know that you're maybe on the tune. So this part here... Yeah. Oh. Don't, know how it works. Don't know how it works. How does it work? How do you do this again? How do you flirt? <laughs> so good. I love that. I know I've locked myself in my room. I know I'm hiding away, but I'll open up the door. I'll try to love again soon. Just like, give me a red hot minute. Give me a tick. Take the pressure off, you know? This song is iconic, and I think Julia Jacqueline has actually said this is one of her favourites on the record. It's called Don't Know How To Keep Loving You. And I think it's really good at tackling at the part that sometimes being the person who breaks up with another person isn't easy. It's not that satisfying sometimes. It's not the, ah, oh, weight off the shoulders moment. Like, sometimes that lead up is really difficult, and ah, oh, she is just cutting open her chest and pouring out her heart in this one. This is maybe one of the most relatable songs on the record for people. Oh, this line. Stay friends with I want your mother to stay friends with mine. <laughs> I don't even need to explain that one. It's just... And I know you know my body now, I know yours. It's that familiarity. She this bit. Every gift you buy me, I know what's inside. It's that comfort in familiarity, but needing, needing to get out, needing a change. Don't know how to keep loving you. Now that I know you so well, like it's, oh, I feel like all I'm doing is just repeating lyrics back to you, but it is just, like I said, it is this bare bones style of songwriting where she just says it all in one line and accumulative, it's just like, mind-blowing moment. And this is another song in the record as well that it, it takes its time and it really lets the songwriting do its thing. But if I worked on my skin? What if I cleaned up? What if I worked on my skin? You know, what if I worked on myself? What if I just kind of, you know, that thought process of shit's not changing, so what if I work on me? Ah. Oh. I really, really think this is one of the shining lights on this record and it never gets old live as well. I feel like you can hear a pin drop when she plays this one live. It's just, oh, pristine. This next one is kind of where it goes back into that more soft, slow, stripped back territory. When the family flies in. It's one of the saddest songs on the record and I think it was about one of her friends who passed away and, you know, does what it says on the tin. When the family flies in, it's about that moment where you need that support and Ah, oh. she also has this line about, you know, thinking about the last thing you sent that person and it was just a stupid video. And, you know, her saying, I wonder if you've ever watched it. But, yeah, so it's a bit of a sad one. I love how she also uses metaphor in this way that it's like she describes it as working bees back to the hive. And I really like that because I think, you know, when you've got a beautiful family structure, it kind of is like that when all the other working bees come up to help bring the other bee up. I know what it's like to be in a situation where you're the one that's maybe feeling the most vulnerable and you need the others to kind of pick you up and help you out in that way and just be the little buzzy bee around you. <laughs> Yeah. The last thing that I ever sent to you was an irrelevant music video. Oh, just heartbreaking shit. And apparently she um, was maybe meant to do this one on guitar, but then they switched to piano. And I'm really glad they made that decision because I think it gives it even more space. And it also means that someone else can potentially play the piano and she can just sing it, which I think is really maybe needed for this song or really special because it is just such an emotional one. I think it'd be hard to concentrate on two things at once. So good instrumental decision there. All right. 
This next one is Convention. And I do like, this is the middle of the record, smack bang in the middle. And I quite like that because I think it is a nice breathing point. We've just come out of such an emotionally heavy song. We're kind of seeing, seeing the end. We're kind of realizing stuff in the words of Kylie Jenner. We are <laughs> realizing stuff about relationships, about breakdowns, about breakups. And this song in particular is about, I think, Oh, I, I saw it live once and I think she said it was about maybe an open mic night where some guy was trying to mansplain one of her guitars or guitar pedals to her. I could be wrong on that, but it was actually written during the time of the US election and she said she was listening to the radio with her mum and, you know, just hearing people talking shit and, like, you know, it is kind of that, that feeling of... Oh. That line, it's just like, can I say something? Can I give some advice? You know, just these unsolicited opinions, advice, mansplaining. She'd had shot of it and it all culminates in this song, which is again, you know, you just got that kind of guitar picking. It's almost like a lullaby in a way. Well, if you don't teach me how to do it right. Mm. It's just that subtle dig. You know, I can tell you're not gonna sleep well if you don't teach me how to do it right. So tell me, what's your opinion? What do you've got to say? Like I just, ah, oh, she's just the queen of cool. Just cool. Oh, I love it. This is Good Guy and I saw her live and she said, this song is about the type of guy who would play Bon Iver during sex. Like, <laughs> It is kind of about that good guy notion and that reassurance that you need to give people sometimes. How I read this song is, I kind of feel it even more so coming out of lockdown and, and coming out of the era that we're currently in where we haven't been able to mingle or date properly or do that. I think a lot of people who are maybe single are gonna be looking for the partner experience in casual partners. So maybe not committing, but saying like, oh, just, you know, like she says, just tell me I'm the love of your life just for one night. You know, tell me I'm everything, that I'm everything you want just for one night. I know when we wake up in the morning, it's going to be different, but just now, can I get that from you? And I think, I, I foresee it. I reckon it's going to happen. I reckon, you know, people are going to be investing in the boyfriend or the girlfriend experience from people they have no intention of being with long term. So it's funny, my relationship with this particular song has changed a little bit over the years because I just, oh, I think in different times of singledom, it just hits different. Come on. Breathe in, breathe out, you're still a good guy, don't freak out, you know? So it's less about the kind of mansplaining aspect that we heard before and more just kind of like, listen, it's chill. Don't freak out, you're still a good person. So this is You Were Right. This is definitely the most like upbeat moment from the record and also the most savage. I think this is where we hear Julia at her most cutting. And I think this is the ultimate like, you know when you've ended a relationship with someone and you're a bit sad and you're a bit mopey, but then something happens or something that switches and you're like, Actually, no, I'm fucking angry now. I'm angry. And you've got that little bit of anger to hold on to with and just take with you and be like, nah, actually, you piss me off. And it helps you get over them a little bit easier. I feel like that is this song incarnate. You were always trying to force my taste, but now I'm eating it because I want to. Ah! You know, I'm eating here because I want to eat here. Not because you brought me here, not because you introduced it to me, not because you were trying to show me what... I'm eating here because I want to. Like, that's... That's hard. What can I do to change myself for your sake? What can I do to change myself for your sake? Ah! Oh! Started feeling like myself again the day yes, I'm saying your name. Can we all just take that in? Started feeling like myself again the day I stopped saying your name. Oh! Write it down. Take it with you. You can try and start it up. We can try to start it up again, but it's never going to feel the same. Honestly, Auntie Julia, she is spitting truths. Super quick, 2.15. She says it, she does it. She gets the fuck out of there, but she doesn't. Not yet. Because we've got this song, Turn Me Down. So I think what I love about Julia Jacqueline's writing is her ability to take you into a setting. So at the start of the record, we're in the midst of a massive fight, a massive blow up. 
at the airport. At this song, in this point of the record, we're in the car. Did you hear that? I see a bright future, I'm just not sure that you're in it. <laughs> that is the most savage shit. This really feels like one of those songs that's just like, oh, like a confessional. And again, it's these, these huge statements and declarations and really like earth shattering moments, but she does it in this really chill, cool, calm, collected way. Like it's, and then silence. So please just oh. turn me down. Oh, it's so raw. So like, just turn me down. You know, like I said earlier about the very simple, honest, straight up songwriting. Again, it's just, just turn me down and she just repeats it over and over again. <laughs> I can't hold it as long as her. I can't do it. <laughs> Don't look at me. Then we're back in the car. Maybe I'll see you in a supermarket. Maybe I'll see you in a supermarket sometime. How, what a, how fucking magical is that? This huge build, turn me down, turn me down, turn me down, and then, oh well, maybe I'll see you around. And I'll see you at IGA. It's just, ah, oh, incredible. And you know what, you hear that big pause in the middle. I've, a couple of times in the early days when she played this live and people weren't really across this content, people thought that was one song and would clap. She's like, no bitch, <laughs> just you wait. <laughs> just you wait. <laughs> And this is the last song, it is called Comfort. And I like to think it is a bit of a safety blanket on the record. It's like it ties it up in a neat little bow, even though the package is chaos. Like it's just. You'll be okay, you'll be all right. What I love about this song is that it's like reassurance, but without saying, oh, time heals all wounds, you know? It's not taking that really cliche kind of trope that doesn't help anyone. I think she says that they're actually cured with time. Cured with time. And you just gotta sit in it. You can't be the one to hold him when you were. I think that is one of the biggest punches in the gut in this record. Like, you can't be the one to hold him when you were the one who left. And I think you can take that a couple of different ways, in that it's kind of one of those things where I don't know, maybe it is something, when, you're, when you've broken up with someone else, it's kind of this attitude of, well, you can't be upset because you broke up with them. But then I also like to think of it in a way where it's like, you can't go looking for information or you can't go looking for reassurance when you were the one who left. You know, you can't go stalking their socials or nonchalantly asking their friends about them. You left, you need to let them live and do their thing and give them space and accept that it's none of your business. It's none of your business anymore. I'll be okay. It gives me like a little lump in my throat. Like it's just that really well-rounded declaration at the end. You know, she takes back a bit of power. She says, I'll be okay, I'll be all right. But after that moment of vulnerability where you go, are you thinking about me? You know, you like, I was so happy with you. Like maybe things were good, but no, nope, I'll be okay. I'll be all right. I'll get well soon. It doesn't end necessarily on a, on a happy note either. It's not a happy ending. It's just kind of like, yep, yeah, it'll heal with time. I'm feeling absolutely crushed, but we'll get through it together. And I got friends that I can lean on and my support system and this record. Favorite songs on the album. If I had to pick just a handful to go with. Body, Pressure to Party, Turn me down and don't know how to keep loving you. I've got to pick that one, honestly. It's all just so special. Even though I've named like a few songs that I love, it is one of those records that I really just like listening to from start to finish. Like I'm booking in the time, I'm making a date with it. Oh, I just think it is absolute magic. It's not a breakup album necessarily, but it is one if you have ever felt crushed 
by your emotions, particularly when it comes to love or relationships or situationships. It is one of my favourite records of all time, Julia Jacqueline's Crushing.